Thank you very much for waking up and being here. Much appreciated. Um, we've just been having our inevitable little technology problem, so let's hope that that's going to work for us. As Chris um, explained, the, the word invest I was asked to speak on, um, but I put that question mark on it because um, as far as I'm concerned, there are a few definitions out there. You might think of something like that. But I don't think of something like that. I'm much more comfortable with something like that. Um, for example, a landscape, a landscape designed 150 years ago by Lancelot Capability Brown for one of his clients. He and his client in designing such a landscape would know that they were never going to sit in the shade of those trees. And the, the people I admire are people who plant trees that they know they will never sit in the shade of. Or you could nip up to the Yorkshire Dales, those beautiful glaciated valleys, and see um, the back-breaking work that was done by generations before to build the dry stone walls, the, the stone barns, still functional, still absolutely um, beautiful. But how about this? The 200 men who gave their lives, who invested their lives to build the Ribblehead Viaduct, opened in 1874. Uh, of course, the politicians of the 1980s thought that the settled Carlisle Railway wasn't necessary anymore, so they wanted to close it down. Fortunately, the locals fought a five-year battle to keep the settled Carlisle Railway open, and there you have it. Still beautiful, still functional, made entirely from local materials, but 200 men gave their lives um, to build it. Next 20 minutes, we could spend looking at examples like this of those who have invested for the future. But let's just give you one example a little bit nearer to home. Um, about seven years ago, Royal Leamington Spa was suggested to me as a possible location for Vitsu that was outgrowing, frankly had outgrown um, London. And as soon as it was suggested, I pulled out one of those old route planner maps that we don't use anymore, and I laid a piece of um, tracing paper over it. And off the top of my head, I put our key suppliers on, not quite as many red dots as that, um, but it looked pretty damn similar to that. That's Fitzu's supply chain. That's about a two-hour radius. Uh, when Cambridge University did a life cycle analysis of us about 10 or 12 years ago, they said, remarkable how short your supply chain is. You should make much more um, of it. So I visited Leamington Spa and I took pictures like this. I see at this time of year they're, they're coming out again. Um, I realized that the train station was connected directly to Marylebone. Vitsu has a shop in Marylebone. We've been there for 16 years, so you could walk from here to our shop in Marylebone with the train. Um, good schools, colleges, universities that are rich engineering history. You know it all, Frank Whittle, Malcolm Sayer, those sorts of things. Um, but then I discovered, oh, Silicon Spa, gaming. You probably don't know. Vitsu is a dot com. That's how we sell to 70 countries. So we go, oh, digital. And then gradually meeting the creative, artistic community as well. And going, oh, okay, all these um, bits are coming together. And pretty well during that time, it was voted happiest place to live, inevitably. <laughs> um, we were introduced to this three and a half acre site. Uh, the site of the form, former Ford foundry. Uh, quite quickly, it became clear that it was a somewhat politically sensitive um, site in the in the locality. Um, just that 15 minute walk to where we are uh, now. But um, looking at that, and as a small furniture maker based in London, we went, how are we going to make that work? Um, at the end of 2013, we issued this to our customers and suppliers, a bond invitation, inviting them to um, lend money to us from a minimum of £5,000. Many of our customers over the years had said to me, Mark, if there's ever anything I could do to help, please let me know. Well, we took them at their word. Um, we raised eventually just short of £9 million from this um, bond. That was customers and suppliers lending us money in return for a modest interest rate, um, but mainly because they wanted to be part of the journey and they wanted to um, support us. 
So um, three months after the Brexit vote, what timing, um, we started on site. That's nearly as much as I will say at Brexit about Brexit, other than to reassure you that if you've been at the front line of running a business over the last three and a half years, it's been much tougher than it, it should have been. Um, so we started on site. Um, Two cranes only, no scaffolding, if you saw it um, happening. And there we were, December 2016, with the, the structure fully up, still a ploughed field beneath your feet. Um, but a building designed that, whether Vitsu becomes an entirely um, digital business or an entirely physical business, that it could be accommodated within this 135 meter long space. June 2017, uh, we opened that building. And just to orientate any of you who don't know wh where it is, I'm still amazed how often I have to um, explain in the, the locality where we are and indeed what we do. Um, but at the first spring, um, the landscape designed by Kim Wilkie, you'll probably better know him for the um, courtyard at the V&A, for example, so that we agreed to reinstate the ridge and furrow of the, the West Midlands. Uh, so, of course, the um, and wildflower seed it. So the first year uh, with the disturbed land, it was the poppies, but then the second year it was the um, it was the daisies. Now open Monday to Friday um, in the afternoon. You can book our next open day, 21st of February, 9:30. That's where you can go if you would like to. Um, have a look. Um, but as I'm the new boy in the town, let me just give you a little, little bit about um, my background. Um, back in the 1970s, yes, difficult to believe, um, I went to school over there in Northamptonshire at um, Oundle. The naturalist Peter Scott had been um, there, that's um, the son of Scott of the Antarctic. Um, and when I was there, the biology department was still um, very strong. But as were the workshops, we spent a, a week a term in the workshops where I would make things like this. I still have it. It's aluminium, it's wood, it's a cassette rack, of course. Um, but while I was there, The Selfish Gene was published. Richard Dawkins had also been at Oundle, so he was um, a, a big influence on the biology department. And I learned about the word altruism, that word which is the opposite of selfish. Um, also in the 70s, local man, German emigre, you will remember, E.F. Schumacher, Fritz Schumacher, you'll remember it as small as beautiful. Most people forget the subtitle, A Study of Economics as if People Mattered. Um, he was strongly influenced by Gandhi, Ruskin, um, and Marx. Uh, I remember this being hotly debated in um, my household as I was a teenager. And he boiled down the root of the human problem to greed and envy. Uh, he had set up in 1966 was the um, Intermediate Technology Development Group. It's now known as Practical Action, and it's just up the road in rugby, still very much active. Um, but in my last year at school, this man hit the screens. Uh, I was absolutely gripped by this series. It was the final confirmation, if I needed it, that I should go and read um, biology at university. I went down to Exeter. I could be up in Dartmoor when I wanted to be. I could be down in the rock pools on, on the coast. Um, and while I was there, my interest in this guy developed. Uh, as you well know, he published in 1859, On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favoured Races in the Struggle for Life. This is my 1902 copy. But little did I know while all this was going on that in 1976, this German gentleman um, had given a speech in New York called Design by Witsu. Uh, if you don't know him, uh, he um, had joined uh, Braun, the German electrical um, products company, in 1955. And he, for his career, has worked almost exclusively only for Braun and to this day, Vitsu. He's just about to turn um, 88 and still works with us. And there was a major documentary was on BBC uh, August last year called Rams on him uh, and it's now on Amazon and Apple TV plus but in that speech in New York in 1976 he said and the emphasis is mine
1976, 44 years ago. I would argue that thoughtlessness is the precise opposite of investing. Committing a resource in the, expect in the expectation of a future benefit. Um, Dieter had joined Braun in 1955 as a 23-year-old as Braun was moving from that, that's a record player and a radio, to that. Identical technology, different skin. Rams's contribution was the clear material for the, the lid, a lucite, a perspex, an acrylic that could be heat formed, um, worked out how to attach that to the lid. Uh, first time that a clear material was put on top of a record player. Um, and to this day, I think you'll find that record decks still have a clear lid. Three years later, 1959, um, he designed this little baby, which I will go gently with because it's probably the most valuable possession that um, I have. Um, and that's a stylus in the bottom right hand corner so that you can put your record on it. Um, you can even, that is my current pair of headphones that you can plug into the three and a half mil hole in a 1959 um, record player. It became known as the, um, with the benefit of hindsight, the first Walkman. Um, the part at the top on there is a, is a radio, but there was also um, a loudspeaker and a radio that went with it. Um, 1959, and that is probably the influence. And if you see Nato Fukasawa, the Japanese industrial designer, holding this in in the Rams film in such a reverential way, because he had never had one in his hand before. T3, it's called. Um, 1961, T1000, a shortwave radio in an aluminium um, body. This presentation today is playing from an electrical device in an aluminium body. Um, there it is, highly sophisticated bit of kit. Um, what's been in my bag for more than 30 years is that guy. And if you see any influence there. Um, um, but that calculator is still in use after 30 years because, of course, it was designed with a cover. Um, so, as you've seen, 1970s, some of you might be old enough to remember them, first stirrings of the environmental movement. Um, I've just shown you lots of injection molded plastic here. Dieter Rams was realizing that he might be part of the problem producing all of this injection molded plastic. So he asked himself an important question. Over the next few years into the early 80s, uh, gradually his answer emerged become known as the 10 principles for good design. We can spend the rest of today discussing them. We don't have that time. Please note at number nine, good design is environmentally friendly. If Dieter were here today, he would remind you that design above all is a thinking process. So let's snip back a little bit further, 1955. Um, Dieter's sketch for the modernization of the interiors at Braun. You've seen how the products were changing, so they needed to change their business in line with the products. Notice on that back wall those black uprights. We'll come back to them. A couple of years later, he was introduced to this charming Danish gentleman, Niels Witsu. I had the privilege of working with him for 10 years before he died in 1995. And the vision that Niels had set out for the company that he founded in 1959 is this. We say mutually invested. So remember those uprights on that sketch in that uh, from 1955. In 1960, that's what went into production: the 606 Universal Shelving System, celebrating its 60th birthday this year. There it is, empty. You never see it like that. But equally, you're never going to see it like that because we sell invisibility. Um, that's both the virtue of what we do at Vitsu, but it's absolutely our vice, being that most people don't see our product. And we sell it quietly. 
And here it is, just at a few customers dotted around the world. Um, my children started by having their nappies changed on it. Um, they both now have exactly the same shelves in their own independent homes 25 years later. Uh, while the shelving system might obviously be a kit of parts, Lego for grown-ups, this might less obviously um, be, um, but you can own that chair, you can unbolt that arm from it, you can then add other bits to it, you can add a table, so it all as a kit of parts as well. Um, let me just remind you why Vitsu is on this planet to allow more people to live better with less that lasts longer. Um, absolutely to invest for the long term. No mention of shelves, chairs or furniture. I would argue that Vitsu is not a furniture business. I would argue that Vitsu is not a brand. Vitsu is Vitsu. For example, one thing we are well known for is our honest pricing. That's our um, shop in New York um, only a few weeks ago where we, and the same in London, where we explain that because we do not have any obsolete stock, we do not have um, a sale, we don't have anything to get rid of before it goes out of fashion and the, the next season's products have to arrive. Um, that's our shop in New York on Black Friday, for example. Um, it has been observed um, by outsiders that we show respect for the customer by treating everybody uh, in the same way, irrespective of who you are. Therefore, at any one time, more than half of the orders that we are selling from that building over there um, are coming from existing customers. They invest, absolutely. We genuinely encourage more customers to buy less from us. Everybody is trained at Vitsu. Um, if the customer thinks that's going to be a bit too much money, then just remove a bit, explain that they can come back later. We're still going to be here. 60 years on, we're still working at it. Um, for example, there was... Um, an academic paper um, published by two um, Cambridge academics about four or five years ago, and that paper was entitled Towards a Sufficiency-Driven Business Model, and Vitsu was a key case study in that, and I quote, Sufficiency-driven business models seek to moderate overall resource consumption by curbing demand through education and consumer engagement, making products that last longer and avoiding built-in obsolescence, focusing on satisfying needs rather than promoting wants. So, how much do you have to invest to come into the world of Vitsu? Nipping around that thing called Instagram, you can find a few pictures like that. Um, cost, including delivery to you, probably? About that. What's that? Well, I've told you that the shelving system is now 60 years old. We know absolutely that it lasts comfortably 60 years. Uh, we know that it goes into customers' wills and gets handed on. But let's just be a little more cynical. Let's just go for 20 years. That investment, 20 years, £17.50 per annum. What's £17.50 per annum? About that, depending where you drink. You might go to Spoons and get five or six out of it. Um, you could do six, seven, or eight of those. I never, ever buy those. Those are not allowed in our building at Vitsu. Um, I will be the one um, walking around somewhere to try and buy a cup of coffee and my selection will be on the basis of whether I can get it in a cup or not. Um, the best way to invest in the future um, might surprise you. Can I give you one example where a product, company, people, software, hardware, everything is integrated end-to-end, -end, just like the natural world. In nature, we call it an ecosystem. Um, here's one example. The Routemaster bus. Um, a design project, 1947 to 1955, immediately post-war, 
um, making use of the aerospace technologies that have been developed in the war, which is why you're looking at an aluminium monocoque um, riveted body. If you look at those top left and right corners, you could see that maybe you are with an aeroplane. So you have something lightweight, much more um, fuel efficient. Uh, longevity was stated in the original brief for it. Um, it was easier to dismantle, cheaper to service and repair. But part of the system for this bus is this. Very few pictures still exist. The Aldenham Bus Overhaul Works in Hertfordshire. Now long since destroyed. Um, here are the buses coming into it. Um, and as soon as a bus would come in off the street, uh, the body would be taken off, the chassis was then taken on a, a jockey there, the engine, the gearbox could all be dismantled, and the parts could then be distributed um, around this building, and within seven days, parts of that bus would be back out on the street again. They would not be the same parts, one part might need a, a longer service, so it would be held there. But this system-based process allowed buses to be um, repaired and put back on the streets incredibly quickly. Um, and it is the secret of the longevity of the Routemaster, and this only fell apart when, day I, dare I say it, in the 1980s, we decided that making profit out of buses was more important than providing a service with buses. Very interesting to hear in the last couple of weeks that we're now um, politicians of the same color of where we were in the 80s and now starting to talk about buses again. Um, it's probably enough politics for this morning. Um, brought it with me. Um, little stainless steel tool designed and made by us, a screw that goes um, with it with um, four kilograms worth of magnet between the screw and the um, tool. So that with that chair you saw earlier, you can do that as your life changes, grows, contracts, as you need to re-upholster all of that at home. So Systems are, and whether it's a bus or whether it's a chair or a shelving system, simple to construct, repair and dismantle, just like this building. Vitsu, founder member of the Centre for Industrial Sustainability at Cambridge, working with Imperial and Cranfield University. Um, and so we worked intellectually on this building for a long time before we'd ever discovered a place called Royal Leamington Spa. Um, it's got a beach frame, uh, it's got cross laminate timber walls, uh, complete internal flexibility, uh, a north lit roof, uh, doesn't show the photovoltaic panels on there. Um, the, the height is important, the stratification to allow hot air to rise in the building, the windows open at the top for natural ventilation. There's the residential accommodation in the building, five bedrooms and a flat and a laundry there. I lived in there for nearly two years before uh, I eventually moved a house to Leamington a couple of weeks ago. Colleagues from Munich, Los Angeles, um, New York, London, Suffolk, Wales, were all staying in the accommodation there. Natural materials, materials that will develop a patina that will get better with age, not worse with age. Entirely north-south orientated, there you can see the photovoltaic panels through the windows, so completely self-sufficient for power during daylight hours, uh, generally no lights on in there whatsoever. Um, but if you've seen the exhibition upstairs, one for you, Avril, this morning, um, the, the beautiful William Lee, our, our chef uh, in our building, who starts by cooking us breakfast in the morning um, and uh, a tea break at 10 and lunch at 12.45, all from uh, local product. Anybody in the room who's not heard me say it before, anybody know the origin of the word company? Thank you, Avril. I think you might have heard it before. Um, cum pane, with bread, where um, in ancient civilizations you would gather together to break bread. And of course, because you were gathered together to break bread, that's when um, discussions would happen and decisions would get taken. And that's where the notion of a company came from. So at Vitsu, we see it extremely important 
um, that we break bread together, that we all eat together, uh, especially in the day and age where we are dominated by these things. We actually believe it's, it's very important for human beings to talk to each other. Um, when Will caters for events for us, this guy, this is Dieter Rams, so in, um, a year or so ago coming over to um, see us, there is that T1000 radio I was showing you earlier. Um, that's what a Vitsu event looks like. There's Will in the, the bottom right-hand corner um, having catered for it. If you would like to join his team, we are looking for somebody to join his team at the moment. Uh, that is where you go. So much more I could tell you about life in that building, but we don't have time. But let's just try this one. Um, we have said for many, many years that we believe at Vitsu that recycling is a defeat. Glad to see the message being picked up more recently. Um, reuse is our mantra. Here are aluminium die castings that we make in Walsall. Um, going into the plywood stillages boxes that we design um, to ship them around from the foundry to the powder coater and then there's another process goes on. Some of those stillages are um, over 20 years old, some you can see are younger. Um, only last week I noticed this happening over at Vitsu as we were making yet more of them. You can see they're screwed together, not glued together, so it's a, a kit of parts so you can repair any bits when they get broken. When we send a cabinet to you that we have built, it comes out um, in this cabinet bag, plywood lined, Velcro, um, the quickest, most efficient, cheapest way to get the product to you, they cost £140 each. That's investment. 20 years old on the left, new on the, the right. Here's Dan building a cabinet in natural light, uh, Matt putting the finishing touches to a cabinet, uh, and here is Ian um, hand sewing the base of the footstool, um, fully coil sprung footstool. Takes him two hours to put that single footstool um, together. Here's Lily, who's in charge of the assembly team. Um, but sort of components that you will be completely um, unaware of going into our products, dual light quality, um, designed by us, made by the, the very best um, companies who can make um, components like this. Here's the upholstery for the chair, the cushions that go in that, all of the components for the chair, a rubberized coir base ready to um, be assembled, even the swivel base that you will um, sit on. That's what it looks like when you um, get to it soon. That's where you can sit Monday to Friday afternoons if you want to come and have a look. If any of those roles I have just flicked you through appeal to you or somebody you might like to know, that is where you go. But if that's not your bag, how about this? This is Vitsu in the digital world. That is not a photograph of a chair, that is a render of a chair. Just going live this week, new configurator, um, how you can configure and buy the chair online. Um, so done by our tech team, and uh, we are looking also um, to add to that team. So just a quick reminder of Vitsu's global reach. That was us in Frankfurt back in 1971. Here we are in New York today, over in Los Angeles, over in Munich. Newly opened shop um, in uh, London, in Marylebone, Marylebone Lane, opened October last year. This is what happened when Tita Rams came to join us for the opening night. Um, even this guy was a customer. And before Chris shouts me down. For 60 years at Vitsu, we have been committing resource. But only in the expectation of the future benefit for our customers, suppliers and society at large. Vitsu exists for altruistic reasons, not for selfishness, where a few benefit at the expense of the many. I live, over the, live there, I work over there, I cycle between the, the two, um, I take my bike on the train to London, increasingly I use technology to avoid flying wherever I can, 
um, and my walking, swimming, cycling holidays are in, as you've seen, in Yorkshire or in France. Here, for example, is my 31-year-old toaster. I can still take it apart and repair it with great ease. Another German emigre um, who set up Duolet in southeast London um, immediately after the Second World War. But here is my 41-year-old jotter and fountain pen in my pocket today. 41 years old, 18th birthday present, you get the general idea. Um, at Vitsu, we and our customers have invested in this with these principles so that we can all do less, do it better, and make it last longer. I would ask you to try it before every decision you take. Eat less meat, but eat better meat. Have one glass of good wine, not a bottle of cheaper wine. The scientist in me knows that the solution is not veganism for all, and it's not electric cars for all. We must slow our lives down. We must travel less. We must seek those few items and experiences that are truly fulfilling. We must apply it in our personal lives, for sure. Um, but everywhere we have influence in our creative lives, being here together today. Um, thank you for investing your time um, with me today so that we can all invest in our future together. Thank you very much.